Welcome back to the second half here from Cabinus Field in Corpus Christi, Texas. 5A, Division One area round between the Los Fresnos Falcons and the Laredo United Longhorns. I'm Kevin Otto. Matthew Menchaca here to my right. Set to bring you the second half on ValleyCentral.com. Defense has been the story in the first half. A field goal each for each team. 3-3 was the halftime score. As the Lofresnos Falcons booted a field goal with 53 seconds left in the first half, they were able to get on the board. Defensively for the Falcons, they've been able to slow down Derek Espada. The same can be said for the Longhorn defense. They've been able to slow down Brandon Colon, who in my opinion is one of the best wide receivers in all the Valley, Nathan. So again, a very, very chilly night here in Corpus Christi. A, a big cold front just swung through the uh, South Texas area and just really is, had an effect on this game on how these players play and then with the north wind blowing in from our left to right it's been a very tough task for these teams to throw the football I, you, Joe Bowling was talking to me earlier he said these kids this offense for the Longhorns throw the ball about 80% of the time and when I said the win would have a factor, he said advantage Los Fresnos. So that's been the case so far. We're about to get the second half underway here at Cabinus Field in Corpus Christi, Texas on ValleyCentral.com. The halftime score being 3-3. The Falcons will be kicking this one off from left to right to the Longhorns. We'll get their hands on the football to start the second half, Nathan. Longhorns in their white uniforms, orange helmets. As both schools again, very, very cold night. Neither of these teams are uh, used to this cold weather. Fans are getting up on their feet. Second half, seconds away. Falcons kicking off from left to right. And the second half is underway here in Corpus Christi. Low line drive punt. Longhorns taking it inside the 5, crossing the 10. Gets across the 20. All the way down to the 25-yard line. So that's where Derek at Espadasa and company will take over. Just a couple seconds taken off the clock. Out comes the Longhorn offense. Who only put up three points on that opening possession. They were able to get three points and thanks to a, a fumble on that opening possession for the Falcons. That's been the only points for the Longhorns. They'll line up with a four-receiver set. Two to the right, two to the left. Hand off to the running back up the right hash, then cuts it back up to his left, picking up a couple of yards there on the run. That was a pickup of six on the ground, making a second and four for the Longhorns. Again, four receivers set at Spotasa out of the gun. And a design quarterback run to the right side of Spotasa, trying to bounce it to the outside, and then a big hit on the far side of the field from the Falcon defense. So a third down coming up. Javier Cruz warming up on the sideline. Trying to keep warm. His defense is trying to get him the football back. Should be an, a, an exciting second half. Third and four. And Spadasal looking back to pass. Looking to his right. Pass is complete. Oh, they're going to say incomplete. Look at if he had it, then he dropped it. A pass incomplete. So it's going to bring up a fourth down. Three and out for the Longhorns. That's right, Kevin, a fourth and four here. You can see, we're on the home side press box, so you can see the fans from Los Fresnos firing up after that drop pass. Brandon Colon back to receive this punt. He's very dangerous on the special teams aspect. Snaps there, punts away. Colon's going to wave everybody off. This one will die around the 40 at the 42 yard line. That's where the Falcon offense will take over for the first time in this second half. 4 and 21 there had a uh, sort of a after the ball hit battle between just the two of them. Tensions are high. Going from left to right are the Falcons. Screws out of the shotgun, trips right, one lone receiver to the left, quarterback run. Sweeping out to the right, crossing the 40, lowering his shoulder. And tackled by a pair of Longhorn defenders, Robert De La Verga, was the first man there. 
And looking at it, Kevin, something that's affecting both of these teams is the weather here. It's 50 below here at Cavanese Field. And that that's something that neither of these teams are used to. They're used to the Valley Heat and the Laredo Heat. Trips left for the Falcons. On receiver to the right, Eli Cruz. Swing pass complete. And he's stuffed immediately. And another big stop from this Longhorn uh, defense. And again, these, sec these, these defensive backs are really swarming the football. That'll bring up a third and 15. So a third and long coming up for the Falcons. I guess you could say here both teams are lucky. Cruz out of the gun. Three receivers set. Left to right. Cruz fires. Wide open. And that pass is going to hit the turf. Or they're going to call it complete. But it'll be well shy of a first down. It'll be a fourth and eight after that completion. And a three and out. Both teams answering each other. Falcons punting this one away. Left to right. Snaps there. It's a high booming punt. Longhorns field it. Hit immediately and the ball's put on the ground but it's out of bounds. Good special teams coverage there from the Los Fresnos Falcons. Game time temperature at 45. Then when you factor in that wind chill, we're at right around the 40 degree mark. So you're right. This wind is blowing right into Derek Espadosa's face as he's now going from right to left. That north wind's really coming in. And weather is a factor. Back in the Valley, uh, Harlingen and Sherryland, their game got postponed. Bogus Stadium was completely underwater, so they'll be back at 2 o'clock tomorrow. Edinburgh North and Harlingen South just got underway. They're in a little delay as well. Here there is no rain, just cold, cold weather. Hand off, picking up a couple of yards there, are the Longhorns. Talking about the weather, Kevin, I was over in Laredo back in August, and their heat was so much that the AC on the bus I was on stopped working. Adam Spadasa, quarterback keeper, all the way up to the 25. Now, we can go ahead and look forward to the winner of this ball game here. We'll either face San Antonio Warren or Converts Judson. Judson leads at halftime 14-8. to So if you're a Longhorn fan or if you're a Falcon fan, you might want to keep an eye on that Judson-San Antonio Warren game. Hand off up the middle, a couple of yards there. Looking at that uh, Converts Judson and San Antonio Warren team, both teams are even across the board, both with 9-2 and two records, and respectively making the playoffs. Kevin, you were saying that uh, people should keep an eye on that game. Where can they find the, the score for that game and sort of keep an eye on it? We'll get to that after this play. Longhorns with the football. Pass complete, hit immediately. The 28-yard line, you can always, uh, if you have a Twitter, at Jetson Football or TexasHighSchoolFootball.com. Plenty of websites for them to keep them up to par with the matchups and the playoff picture in general and the 5A rankings Longhorns going from right to left chase from behind flushed out of the pocket rolling out to the right at Esparza down to the 30 35 and a big run there from Derek Esparza who had a quiet first half after he exploded in the first half of last week's matchup against Donna he's been quiet so far he finally gets a big play there Second and one for the Longhorns. Designed quarterback run back to the 40-yard line. It's going to be close. We have an updated score in the first quarter. Edinburgh North 7, Harlingen South 7. The ironic thing for the Cougars and the, and the Hawks is that they squirt off in last year's area round of the playoffs. But that game being over at Bogus Stadium. Right to left. Longhorns with the football. It'll spot us out back to pass. Looking for a man on a wheel route. Has him open down the sideline completely. And are they going to call it a catch? And they're going to call it a completion. He had both feet in bounds and an impressive grab at the 29-yard line. So 
So a nice job there. He had a defender right on him, and he was able to take him off, land inbounds, and make that one complete. Handoff up the middle for the Longhorns. This time, Paulson takes the carry. That last reception, Jordan Hedetta hauled it in on a big pass play, and if you see the design r route, oh, just a simple wheel route, caught the Falcons off guard on that last completion. Second and nine after the pickup of one. Quick bubble screen swarmed by Los Fresnos defenders. Eric Conoya hauled that one in, but then was swarmed by, again, a flock of Falcons. 24 for the Longhorns had to be talked to by the referee as he did not want to let that one end. That play whistle had been blown, and he just wanted to continue hitting the Falcons. Low snap as Spotasop picks it up. Another swing pass, complete across the 30, 35, down to the 20. Lots of big hitting going on between the Falcons and the Longhorns. Six minutes in the third quarter. There's a flag on the field. Looks like it's going to be holding against Laredo United. So that nice long jump done there by the by the Longhorns will actually send them back because of a holding penalty. And that's the thing you got to look out for. Yes, you can run the ball and you can get yarded, but if you're if you have problems up at the the line of play, then every every all the work you put in is uh, useless. And Spots out looking back to pass after the holding penalty fires deep down the field. Beautiful ball, but he's through into double coverage, incomplete pass, no flags on the field. Cologne was one of the defenders back there. Now a lot of extra jawing going on between the defensive backs and the receivers. It'll bring up a third and 17 and a third and long coming up for this Longhorn offense. Question is, are they in four down territory? Do they cut this uh, yardage in half? It's actually maybe? fourth down, Kevin. Hate to interrupt you, but it's a fourth and 17 oh, right the now. scoreboard was a little late there. It still indicated a third and 17. It's a fourth and 17, rather. And Spotasau looking back to pass. He's going to step up, flushed out of the pocket. He's going to try and run for it. And does. Late second effort. It's going to be close. Longhorns are saying they have the first down. They do. They'll move the chains. And that will be a nice run there. And a big, big run there from Erspadas on a 4th and 17. He picks up 20. Football's put on the ground. Who's able to recover it? Looks like the Longhorns are able to recover that one. But that ball took a generous roll and rolled probably about 5 yards in front of him. But nevertheless, the ball was put on the ground. Longhorns able to recover it, though. They picked up 3 in the process. Design quarterback run up to the right side. And again, last week, speaking of scoreboards, it was a challenge for us. The scoreboard wasn't working over in Alice. It didn't indicate whether it was third or third down or fourth down, so that was a challenge we had last week over in Alice. Fortunately for us, the scoreboard operator was able to get things going. Five minutes in the third quarter, timeout called on the Los Fresno sideline. Head coach Finley is going to call a timeout, so with... Six minutes remaining in the third quarter. It's a 3-3 tie here at Cabinets Field. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to ValleyCentral.com. Welcome back to the action after the Los Fresnos timeout. 3-3 three, three game. Longhorns going from right to left. They're facing a third and three. 4.58 in the third quarter. And another design quarterback run. We're going to see where they officially spot this one. Either way, the Longhorns are knocking on the door. And they'll call that one to move the chains, Kevin. So it'll be a first. And Spasa is going to take it himself again. 
inside the nine, down to the five-yard line. And you're right, they were they credited him with a first down after that run. 424, third quarter, 3-3. Three, three. All knotted up, Longhorns knocking on the door. And again, Erspatis is going to take it himself. Goal line, touchdown, Longhorns. Derek Erspatis on a third straight run, designed quarterback run, finds the end zone. So Laredo United gets on the board 9-3 to with 4.18 to go in the third quarter with the extra point coming up. And a nice job done there by the Longhorns. They, were, they had multiple plays go against them. And yet at the end, they made that touchdown. Extra point coming up. And it splits the upright. So with 4.18 to go in the third quarter, the Longhorns first to get a touchdown on the board. They lead 10-3 to here in the third quarter. So now after both defenses exchanging three and outs, the Longhorns are able to muster up a drive led by their quarterback at Espada, despite a couple of penalties. And I think if you look back on that drive, that fourth and 17 was the big difference maker, maker Nathan. That's right, Kevin. These boys uh, have had plenty of chances, the Falcons, to stop the Longhorns. We saw a lot of 4th and 17, 3rd and 15, and yet the Longhorns were just able to come out and be a little bit more aggressive and show that they wanted to touch down, and that's exactly what happened. They were able to get 7 more points up on the board. Falcons look like they would be able to stop the the PAT afterwards, but no luck on that one. And so the Longhorns got seven more up on the board. The Falcons now have a hard task at hand of being able to catch up. And let's see what happens. So the Falcons trail ten to three, four eighteen in the third quarter. Longhorns kicking off from right to left. They're kicking into the wind, so right now the Falcons actually have the advantage. The wind is in their favor. That north wind blowing in. And this kick is going to be fair caught at the 26-yard line of Los Fresnos. So out comes Javier Cruz. We've seen a lot of the design quarterback runs, a lot of read zones from this offense. And one thing I mentioned before we went into the half is they have to get Brandon Colon, their big play maker on the outside. they got to get him more involved along with William Cox and, and Eli Cruz who's really a, a double threat. He can both run the football and catch it out of the backfield. And a great job done there by the Falcons. They had a choice What a, and we'll talk about that right after this play. First and ten. Ball on the 26. Cruz changing up the play. He's under center. Two back set. Hand off. Right up the middle to Eli Cruz. It's number 27 of the Los Fresnos Falcons. Picks up a couple of yards there. That's right, Kevin. They are able to pick up yardage, which is crucial right now that they're down. Cruz was able to pick up two on that carry, make it in a second and eight ball on the 28-yard line. Longhorns are ready to go. Falcon still waiting to get the sign. Cruz out of the shotgun. Cologne, motion man, right to left. It's going to be a designed quarterback run. They'll fake the jet sweep to Cologne. And Javier Cruz will call his own number. Horns 10, Falcons 3 in the third quarter with 328. Here at Cabinets Field in Corpus Christi, Texas. Game type temperature floating around mid 40s, low 50s. So definitely feeling like some playoff. Uh, football in the month of November. Third and two for the Falcons. Screws out of the shotgun. Again, Cologne motion man right to left. Fake the jet sweep. Flags come flying in. It's going to be a false start. And for the Falcons, you can't, you can't afford these type of mistakes to happen to your team as you're down by a touchdown. It uh, makes it harder for you to be able to come back. Third and seventh up. We have an updated score from Edinburgh North and Harlingen South. We'll get you that updated score 
after this play. You're right, that penalty backed him up from a third and two to a third and seven. Still quite manageable for this offense. Cruz out of the shotgun, motion man again, left to right. And this time they'll pitch it on the jet sweep, and that play goes nowhere. Longhorn defense sniffing that one out from the get-go. That defensive back there that made the play was Matt Varos. And again, Nathan, like you, like you mentioned before, the penalty pushed them back from a third and two to a third and seven. So two big plays that you want to highlight is that fourth and 17 conversion, then the, the uh, false start, which put them to a, four, a third and two to a third and seven. Now it's a fourth down and five coming up after the pickup of two on that jet sweep. Falcons punting this one away from left to right. High kick fielded at the 35. Football's put on the ground, but able to recover it is the Longhorns. Their return man, Eric Corona, who nearly put that football on the ground, but was able to uh, maintain possession, and the Longhorns come back out. They lead 10-3, to two minutes in the third quarter. Not where they want to be for the Falcons, but it doesn't mean they're out of it yet. We still have one more quarter of play. And two more minutes of the third. In the second quarter, Edinburgh North leads 13-7. to The extra point was blocked, so they have a second quarter lead against Harlingen South. And a design quarterback run from Derek at his spot of stop, pushing the pile to the 44-yard line. And again, folks, Converts Judson leads San Antonio Warren 22-8 to in the third quarter. So remember, if you're a Falcon fan, if you're a Longhorn fan, the winner here will play the winner between Judson and Warren. Hand off to the outside to the 45 out at midfield on the carry for the Longhorns was Paulison again. And he'll get that first down and a little bit more right there, Kevin. No issues. But there's a flag on the near side of the field around the 47-yard lines with the flag. And, it, and it's a legal block in the back going against the offense. So now the Falcons maybe have just caught the break they've been looking for and the penalty going against the Longhorns with a buck 33 in the third quarter. Longhorns 10, Falcons 3. Los Fresnos well alive in this football game. Their defense looking to either create a turnover or come up with a stop to get Javier Cruz and company back out onto the field. Derek and Espada, meanwhile, is out of a shotgun. Four receivers set. Paulison to his left. Hands off, goes to his running back, goes nowhere, and a big stop there defensively from the Falcons. Domingo Hernandez was the first man in there, applying the pressure. That will bring up a third and long, Kevin. Falcons gave up valuable yardage on that last play. Looking back to pass at a spot of soft fires down the seam. Nearly intercepted. Did he come down with it? No. They're going to wave it incomplete. So that's two interceptions that could have been. Could have been. Again, for this Falcon defense. But that will still bring up a 4th and 11, Kevin. And with this, the Longhorn don't have uh, a lot of momentum going for them tonight. And neither do the Falcons. So they... They'll go ahead and punt off this ball to the Falcons. Danny Ramirez nearly intercepted that football there for the Falcons secondary, who has played exceptionally well in this ball game. Cologne back to receive this punt. Minute left in the third quarter. Low snap. It's there. Line drive punt off to the right, and it hit a Los Fresnos defender. It's gonna be Longhorns football. We're gonna wait for the official call. They're celebrating on the United side. This could be a bad, bad break. For the Falcons, now they're kind of just wondering on what's going on. Meanwhile, on the far side of the field, the Longhorns are celebrating. And it's going to be Longhorn football. Nathan, just an unfortunate uh, play there for the Falcons. The ball bounced off of one of their men's uh, heel. He was running back to cover for Cologne. The ball just took a funny hop, went off his heel, and it became a live football. And the Longhorns have the football again. 57 seconds, ball on the 48, first and 10 at Esparza. Quarterback run up the right side. Big hit from Malagui on the far side of the field. Football's on the ground. Falcons say they have it. On the far side of the field, the United coaches are saying they have it. 
The Longhorns are going to be able to come up with that one, but what a hit from Nick Alegria laying it to Esparza on the far side of the field. Football did come loose, folks, but the Longhorns able to recover a football, so old lady luck is on the side of United right now. That was a pickup of seven, second and three. Hand off up the right side. It's going to be right around the marker with 22 seconds in the third quarter. And a, a, a wacky third quarter on both sides, Nathan, here between the Longhorns and the Falcons. But you have to admit, Kevin, that's what we saw here in the first half also. We saw some wacky. Hand off again to Paulison. Crossing the 40. Out of the 38-yard line, three seconds to go here in the third quarter. Here at Cabinets Field, Longhorns with the football. And there will be no other plays run before this one's end the third quarter as time runs down. So that brings us to the end of the third quarter here at Cabinets Field in Corpus Christi, Texas. Laredo United, thanks to a, a three-yard touchdown run from Derek Esparza, the only touchdown scored in this game at the end of three. Laredo United, 10. Los Fresnos, 3. I'm Kevin Otto. Nathan Menchaca to the right of me bringing you this game. Live audio on valleycentral.com. Fans, remember, you can always tune in for live video and audio an hour after the game is over with. And you've been treated to a defensive battle. Now, that's just a really bad break for Los Fresnos on that, on that fumbled or that muffed punt. If Laredo United is able to put some points on this board. Going from left to right now is Esparza looking back to pass. Flushed out of the pocket. Lots of real estate in front of him. Crossing the 30 down to the 25-20. Up to the right. Picks up a block. He's going to score. 10-5. Touchdown Longhorns. Derek Esparza doing it all for Laredo United. So the Longhorns get on the board. They now lead 16-3. With only 12 seconds taken off the clock. <laughs> Extra point coming up. Hold on, flag on the play, Kevin. So flag on the field as the officials are going to sort this one out. Meanwhile, over at... Jetson 29, Warren 8, 5 minutes left in the third quarter. So, again, the winner here will, will face off either between Conference Jetson and San Antonio Warren. Right now, it's looking like it's going to be a Loreto United team taking on a Conference Jetson team. So far, game's not over yet. Extra point coming up. And it's a fake. They're going to go for two, pushing the pile. Did he get in? It's a rugby scrum right at the goal line. Officials are going to try and sort this one out. Didn't get it. No good. So it's going to stay 16-3. to Longhorn lead with 11.48 to go in the final quarter. We're coming to you live from Canvas Field in Corpus Christi, Texas. You're listening to ValleyCentral.com. Falcons, they really got to get something going. And again, I'll str I've stressed it enough. They got to get Cologne more involved. He's their big playmaker. He had a huge game last week against West Laco, And then in week 10, he really broke out against Harlingen South with two kick returns on back-to-back -back kickoffs for touchdowns. The kid's a very dangerous player, and he's out there with his special teams. They need a spark, and it's got to come from Cologne. That's right, Kevin. You were saying that they need a spark. That's exactly what they need here. These players... Game hasn't quite gone their way. Game's not over yet. You have 11.48 to play. A lot can be done in 11.48. Fumbles, interceptions, just about anything you can think of. It's anybody's ball game. So 11.48 to go in the final quarter after the... Big touchdown run from Edisparsa. United has a 16-3 lead against Los Fresnos. 5A, Division I, area round here at Cabinus Field on a very chilly night in Corpus Christi, Texas. And we'll have to wait on this kickoff as that ball did fall down. So they'll come back to the middle as they reset that one up. 
So Longhorns reset up this ball to kick it off after that win that we had been talking about affected it. So now they're going to try and kick this one away with no football falling off the tee, and they do. Booming kick, Cologne. Not going to have a chance to take this one out, and if you're a special teams coach, you're circling Cologne. He's a dangerous man to take it out. That time they're not giving him an opportunity, so the Falcons will take over. Ball on the 25-yard line. Cologne lined up wide to the right. Four receivers set for the Falcons. Fifteen to go on the play clock. Alegria, the motion man. And they'll give him the jet sweep. And that play goes nowhere. It's a reverse to Cologne. Crossing the 25 to the 30. Cologne still on his feet. Fold us up here. They faked the jet sweep. And it was an end around with Cologne coming from the far side of the field. Isn't that true, Kevin? I went after the other ball runner. Yeah, Nathan here is controlling the camera angle so you can have the, uh, a chance to watch this uh, live video and audio afterwards. It fooled him up here too. He is a great play design from Coach Finley and the Falcons. This time Javier Cruz is going to call his own number. Tripped up. So again with 11.26. Longhorn 16. Falcons 3. A rather quick second half. We had a quick first half. Both teams running the football well. And again, really not what you expected. The halftime score, you see a 3-3 ball game. Defense is playing a huge role in this one. Trips right, motion man. For the Falcons, they'll fake the jet sweep. Wheel route, looking for Cox. Turning and grabbing the football. Nice catch there from William Cox. Not only does he grab that football, Kevin... But he was able to get out of bounds, which for this team is crucial. You need to stop that play clock, and you need to be able to keep as much time as possible up there. You're right. The clock is not their best friend as they trail 16-3 to here in the early stages of the fourth quarter. Cruz out of the shotgun, calling his own number again. Design quarterback run. Room to run, crossing the 40 down to the 35, dragging defenders with them all the way down to the 33-yard line. And a good run there from Javier Cruz. And a nice job done there. He had defenders on him. They were pulling him down. And even like that, he's able to stay up on his feet. Get a couple more yards. Now the fans starting to get into it. First and ten on that run. From Cruz. Looking back to pass. Fires down the left sideline. Looking for Alegria. Balls up. And it's intercepted by the Longhorns, taking it out across the 10, down to the 15, still on his feet, to the 19-yard line, looking for Nick Alegria on the on the straight streak route down the left side. Intercepted, turnover, Longhorns have the football, and hey, you want to give your props to Javier Cruz taking his shot down the field, pass just fell intercepted, a good interception nonetheless from the defensive back from the Longhorns. Kevin, I have to say that defender was all over him. He was right there, right where he needed to be. He got to the point of the ball, and he was able to get the ball. Perfect, perfect defense on that play. Perfect is correct. He couldn't have played it any better. Longhorns taking over at the 18. They're going from left to right. Handoff up the middle, but again, that flock of Falcons are there to stuff that run. Ooh, a little late contact on this one, Kevin. And that's what we're seeing a lot. We saw that last week. We're seeing that this week. It's a playoff heat that makes these boys want to fight a little bit more. No flags have been thrown, though, despite the extra jawing and pushing and shoving. Ten minutes, fourth quarter after the Javier Cruz interception. Second and eight after the pickup of two. Hand off that run. Picks up one or two there. Now you're seeing the offense huddling. Well, Fresno is really going to have to get something going, hoping for the defense to muster up a stop here. And if you're the Longhorns, Kevin, right now what you're looking at is, how do we run this ball, get first downs, and keep the ball out of the Falcons' hands? That's pretty much your main thing. 
Your the clock is your best friend right now. You just want to run it down. Third and eight coming up for the Longhorns. Ball on the twenty and a big third and eight at a spot. It's a delayed quarterback hand, uh, run, calling his own number, and he's going to be well shy of the first down. Looks as if he hesitated a little bit there. Wanted to go to his right, then cut back to his left. That allowed the defenders for Los Fresnos to be alert and know that he was going to keep it himself. So a big stop defensively for the Falcons. Cologne back to get this punt. And he saw how many options he had. That's why he sort of uh, took a took a bit of a breather there, looked around, saw there was nothing, and went with his best option. And this punt gets away. And Cologne is going to stay away from this one at the 39-yard line. To the 38. We'll see where they spot this one. Now back over here, the punter <laughs> wanted to make it seem as if he got tripped up and kind of fell on his backside. And the official kind of just looked at him and said, <laughs> no flag. You know, you, I'm sure you've seen it at home when the, the punters will try and display you know, their best acting award. But this time, he, he didn't sell his pitch there to the official. Los Fresnos will have the football on the 39-yard line going right to left. Redemption time for Javier Cruz. Four receivers set. Eli Cruz to his left. He takes the handoff up the right side. Now to the 44-yard line. Saw Longhorn there tapping the ground with his hand. You could see that he was upset by the fact that he was unable to stop the Falcon on that play. Hurry up mode here after the pickup of four handoff. Up the left hash, fighting for every yard is this Falcon offense. And I've seen them a couple times this year. They're somewhat like of a wet engine. Once you get them going, it is very slow, or it's very hard to slow them down. That's right, Kevin. And another run right at midfield at the 48-yard line on the third and one. And looking here, Kevin, 11 and 6 are having a bit of an issue. The umpire stepped in and said, hey, wait a minute, this isn't going to fly. And that's exactly what we've, we've been seeing a lot of late hits. I think most importantly, they're able to pick up a big first down of the Falcons on the ground. And they'll fake the handoff. Alegria on the quick swing pass, crossing the 45, lowering his shoulder, taking defenders with him all the way to the 40-yard line. Alegria on the reception. Now flags come flying in. Nathan, this might be what you've been alluding to. And let's see what this flag is for, Kevin. And it's going to be a personal foul, something that you've been stressing this quarter. You're saying, Kevin, when are the flags going to come? We're seeing a lot of extra jawing, a lot of extra pushing and shoving. There you go. Maybe the officials are going to say, you know what, we're going to have to try and keep this game under control. We are the officials, and we're going to go ahead and throw a flag. And Nathan, like you said, you know, just take it away. You've been seeing a lot of these extracurricular activities. Uh, that's right. I mean, it. you look at it, and you, you feel kind of bad for the offense because they're getting all these hits that shouldn't even be coming their way. 7.32 after the penalty. Cruz going to call his own number. Design quarterback run. No room for error on this side of the field with as much time as left on the clock in this situation. you got to score a touchdown here. If you're the Los Fresnos Falcons, 7-16 fourth quarter. Horns 16. Falcons 3. Here we go. Javier Cruz out of the shotgun. Cologne lined up to the right in the slot. He's going to look his way. Pass nearly intercepted. Cologne brings it down all the way to the three-yard line. Dangerous throw there from Javier Cruz. That defensive back came probably about half, a, what about half a foot shy or less of intercepting that football and taking it to the house. Tremendous grab from Cologne. Falcons knocking on the door. 6.55 and counting. Cruz out of the gun. William Cox is to his left, four receivers set, the handoff goes to Cox, pushing the pile, but flags come in. False start on the offense. So what would look to be a, a 
false start and anything, and I don't blame you for thinking that. It did look like it from up here, but the officials are going to say it's in a, in a, in a, it's going to go against the defense. An illegal substitution going against the defense. So uh, the fans here from Los Fresnos are kind of wondering what's going on, but this penalty actually favors Los Fresnos. Ball's on the one-yard line. Falcons looking to punch it in. Motion man is Cox. Taking it into the end zone. Diving touchdown, Falcons. And he gets in. Nice job there. Last time they were here, Kevin, that ball got intercepted. Right now, that is not the case. You're right. A turn of events here. The Falcons get on the scoreboard for the first time tonight, reaching the end zone. Javier Cruz really answering back. Well alive in this football game. Plenty of time left on the clock. Extra point is coming up. This is crucial. Snaps there. The extra point is up. And it is good, Nathan. So it's a 16-10 to 10 ball game. With 6.41 remaining, Javier Cruz and company goes down the field, puts up a score. Now the question is, can the Falcon defense come up with another stop and slow down this Longhorn offense? You know, Kevin, it's uh, about 47-48 outside. But I think I just felt the temperature rise. I feel a heat streak coming on by the Falcons here after that nice play. So what was 48, 47 weather now feels like 70, 75. So now the lead has been cut 16 to 10. Falcons well alive in this one. And now if the Falcons can come up with a stop, get a score, how big is that miss extra point? Or no, they didn't. They didn't miss the extra point. Excuse me. They elected to go for two. And after they didn't get it. after the Falcons were, after the Falcons had a penalty called on them on that point after attempt. So you're right. So yeah. Then you go back to wondering. Well, should have we kicked the extra point instead of going for two? But then again, if you get it, you're the, you're the smartest coach in the world. You're up eighteen to ten in this situation. But now that's not the case. Los Fresnos is a touchdown and an extra point away from taking a one-point lead in this playoff game. But now, the case right now, they have to come up with a stop on defense. Longhorns still controlling their own destiny here in the latter stages of the ball game here at Cabinets Field. Calling a fair catch immediately, and he can't go anywhere. He looks like he wanted to take it out at the last second at the 24-yard line. That's where Derek at Spotify and company will take over. I tell you what, Kevin... The reason why they actually went with that sort of uh, play on that one, that they just went ahead and said, you know what, we'll do a fair catch, is because we've seen a lot of strong hits by the Falcon defense that they've been able to get in there. They take down the players, and they make fumbles. There was a fumble over here when the ball was going the other way, but that one went out of bounds. So that's exactly why they went with that. Have an updated score from the other playoff games. We'll get to those in just a second. 641, Longhorns with the football. El Spadasal looking for some room to run. Tripped up at the 24-yard line. The defense for the Falcons really stepping up in this second half. Laredo Alexander, 49. Brownsville Rivera, nothing. That game's going on over in La Jolla. Edinburgh North, late in the second quarter, has a 19-7 lead against Harlingen South. So the Cougars... Stepping up at home at Cat Stadium against Sean Montemayor and company. This pass falls complete at the 29-yard line. Completed pass for the Longhorns. Hauling in that reception was Manny Ramos. We've been saying his name a lot tonight out of the backfield. And out split out wide. Now and you can, you can hear the fans here for the Falcons saying, Go defense. That's exactly what they need right now. They need their defensive backs to come in here take down the offense, and be able to get that ball back for their quarterback. Big third and four coming up with five minutes and 40 seconds left in this one. Falcons trail by six. Here comes a rush. Has time in the pocket. And spot is stepping up, crossing the 30 to the 35. Looks like he was able to pick up enough for the first down. And, and the chains will move, Kevin. He was able to get that one across. Not only was he able to get that one across, but he's also able to run out of bounds, stop the clock, Smart play there by the runner. 531 after the big first down run from first down scramble from Derek Espada has really carried this offense in this ball game, folks. Ball on the 35, 531 left in this one. Falcons trail by six. 
Handoff up the right hash, lowering his shoulder all the way down to the 40-yard line for the Longhorns. And something that you have to think about right now, Kevin, is you're the Longhorns. You have a 16-10 game going on. You have runners that don't want to give up yards. They push forward. And sometimes when you put your shoulder down, that ball can land right out of your hand and go back. There's a, there could be a possible fumble. Four receivers set for the Longhorns. They spot us out of the gun. Second and six. Another design quarterback run. Met back at the line of scrimmage. He's lucky if he got one on that play. So again, the, the Los Fresnos defensive line really putting pressure on that Esponsa right out of the gate with 440 left in this one. And this one is a teeth-clinching game right here. Biting on your jaw if you're a Falcon fan and biting on your jaw if you're a Longhorn fan. Winner here will face a San Antonio Warren or a Converts Judson in the next round. 420 left in this one. False start. It's going to be against the Longhorns. It's going to go against the wideout. Eddie Sanchez, who got uh, the jitters there and jumped a little bit too early. So this could be a break for Los Fresnos. You're going to push him five yards back. And a nice job done there by the Falcons. They got the five yards. Uh, we'll, we'll give them that. But... That's not the main thing that happened on that play. They were able to chase him down. They were going to catch him either way. Looking back to passes that spot us out wide open. Right around midfield. It was a third and ten. And that's a huge, huge first down. So we've seen it twice already. Derek Esparza, cool as the other side of the pillow, converting on third down not once but twice on this drive. Well, it doesn't look like he's having much trouble here. Four minutes to go. Best thing they can do right now is run down the clock on these Falcons. The first and ten. Ball right around midfield. 350 left in this one. That is Spotis out the signal caller. Changing up the play. And again, he's going to call his own number, crossing the 50 into Falcon territory, all the way down to the 40-yard line. And Spadasa is really putting on a one-man show here and carrying his team on his back here in the fourth quarter. That's right, Kevin. 3.33 to play here in the fourth quarter. Longhorns not having much trouble here throughout the game. Both of them did have penalties and interceptions, and a couple of fumbles that went against them, but that's what made this game. We have a halftime score from Cat Stadium. We'll get to that after this play. It's about us out of the shotgun. First and ten. 3-14 and counting. And they'll fake the handoff and another quarterback run from that spot us out. We're down to the 35-yard line. Still on his feet to be drugged down from behind. Uh, halftime over at Cat Stadium, Edinburgh North 19, Harlingen South 7. So folks, if you're curious about that Sherryland Harlingen game, that monster matchup between the two powerhouses in the valley, canceled as of tonight, postponed to tomorrow for 2 o'clock kickoff at Bogus Stadium. Folks, if, you, if you're on the Twitter world, you've seen or if you watch the news, Bogus Stadium was underwater. Joe Bowling was out at that game. Very frustrating for both the Rattlers and the Cardinals back here at Cabinet, second and four for Espadasa. He's out of the shotgun. Another quarterback keeper, but a flag comes in from the near side of the field. Easy call for them. False start. So I'm guessing, Kevin, that they didn't want to have a swimming match? <laughs> my, my, your guess is as good as mine, Nathan. They, they just called that one off. They're going to be kicking off at 2 o'clock tomorrow. That one, folks, is also going to be on ValleyCentral.com. Joe Bowling will be bringing you that game. I will be in Kingsville for the Port Isabel Tarpons and the Orange Grove Bulldogs. That game should be a treat. We'll be coming to you live from Kingsville, Texas at 2 o'clock on ValleyCentral.com. Second and nine after the penalty. 2-16 left in this one. Longhorns with the football. Like Nathan said, they're trying to melt down every second that's on that game clock. Second and nine. 
again at a spot side, up the middle, still on his feet, dragging defenders with him all the way to the 25, down to the 20. Impressive, impressive is this Derek Esparza from Laredo United. I tell you what, folks, he came to play. But then again, Kevin, you have the Falcon quarterback who was able to get some nice throws in. He got a couple of interceptions. He had that interception that the Longhorns received, and they were able to uh, score a touchdown on that bad play. So it, tonight's just been a real game of who would make the last mistake here. And I, I think we saw that earlier in this game. You're exactly right. Coming into the second half, it was anyone's ball game. And, you know, we were coming up, well, this game's going to come down. Whoever makes the first mistake will lose this ball game. And unfortunately, it's at the hands of Los Frestos Falcons. That interception that Javier Cruz threw earlier in the fourth quarter has really proved to be the difference. Along with, let's not forget, they missed two field goals in that first quarter. Now, I don't want to jump the gun here, but let's say the Longhorns are able to hold on in this one. It's 9.57 left in the third quarter. Converts Judson 43, San Antonio Warren 8. So it's almost safe to say that Judson will be scoring off against the winner here. So that, that will be the third round. So, again, I don't want to jump the gun here, but if the Longhorns are able to hold on here, they'd be taking on Converts Judson in the next round. But there's still hope for these those Fresnos Falcons after the timeout called from their defense. And Spadasa out of the gun, and again, he's going to call his own number, trying to bounce it to the outside, lowering his shoulder. This time he goes nowhere. To the 20 yard line. Well, Kevin, to tell you the truth, both teams have actually played very nice defense tonight. That's what we've seen here a defensive battle. Right now, the Longhorns are running down the clock, and it's not over until the Fat Lady sings. But right now, with this clock running down so much, them being so close, I would go ahead and say that the Fat Lady is getting ready here. And unfortunately, it looks to be the end here for the Falcons with a minute and six seconds left in this one. They only have one more timeout. Second and nine, and that run goes nowhere. Derek and Esparza had nowhere to go. So now a lot of the fans are throwing up the, the, the T, meaning timeout, Coach. Let's get this last timeout in. That's what Coach Finley will do. 55 seconds left in this one. Timeout, Los Fresnos. Third down coming up for Loreto United. Fans also want to let you all know that tomorrow, Harlingen and Sherland will also be on channel 4.2. You can break out your little antenna. You can watch the game on there. Or you can also tune in to valleycentral.com. Again, Joe Bowling will have that call from Bogus Stadium, which is promised to be a game of the ages. Last season, Sherryland really took it to Harlingen, winning 42-2. to So I know for head coach Manny Gomez, he wants some vengeance against those Sherryland Rattlers. Well... Tonight we saw a, a very nice matchup between two well-matched teams. It's been the same thing all playoff round through. We got to see uh, a game up in Alice last week between the Edinburgh North Cougars and the Eagle Pass Eagles. Cougars moved on and right now they are ahead over there in that game. 55 seconds left in this one. Third and nine. This is the ball game at Espasa. Looking back to pass. Fires. Corner of the end zone. Balls in the air. Incomplete pass, but a flag. Far side of the field in the corner of the end zone, Nathan. This could be the end of the Falcons, possibly. And I'm Looks like it's going to be a passing interference against the defensive back from the Falcons. We're going to get the call from the officials. It was an incomplete pass. And Espasa wanted it all in the corner of the end zone. Yep. That one will be against the Falcons. I, I saw number 20 back there with the receiver. And that's obviously who they called it on here with his... He, he didn't turn around to um, see where the ball is, and that's a thing here. You have, to, you have to turn around, otherwise they will call that foul against you. So that big passing interference called going against Los Fresnos will set them up with an automatic first and goal ball on the 9-yard line with 50 seconds left in this one. You got what the doctor ordered. You called the timeout. You designed up a defensive scheme. They throw the football. They dare to throw the football. It fell incomplete. Just the, the only negative was 
I'll pass an interference call. And right now, Laredo United has just took a, taken a knee. Okay, now we're going to hold the phone on the knee there. A false start. Going against Laredo United. So that's going to back him up another five. 48 seconds left in this one. So really what it came down to, Nathan, was that interception. Uh, that pass intended for Alegria on the fourth quarter. Then that big fourth and 17 from Derek Espada, who really changed the, the momentum at that point. Then Los Fresnos comes back and scores, gets on the board. 40 seconds and counting left in this one. Javier Cruz leads his team down the field. They get in the end zone. They cut it to six. 16 to 10. Then on third and nine, they, they pass an interference call, went against Los Fresnos. And, and that, that was just the end of it there for this defense. And they'll have to go for another down knee here as the time clock will expire before they end the game. So the play clock's at 4-3, so the clock will... See, now the countdown is on for Laredo United. And that will be the final score here at Cabinets Field. The Los Fresnos Falcons. Well, Nathan, they lose a heartbreaker here in Corpus Christi, Texas. The final score, 16-10. to Which, again, that third down. Passing interference against the defense. Automatic first down. Longhorns ball game. Nathan, your final thoughts on this one. Fans, you've been treated to a dandy. Nathan, take it away. Well, it, this one was a... A nice game, no matter what side you're on, whether you're a Longhorn fan, a Falcon fan, or just someone who wanted to tune in and watch a nice game. Either way, you you were able to hear some nice footage. We'll have the game footage up an hour afterwards. And let, let's talk about some uh, game action for tomorrow real quick. I picked the, the uh, Harland Inn over at that Harland Inn and... Cherry Line game. You're, you're going to go with the Harlingen Cardinals? I will go with the Cardinals we'll, on this we'll one. We'll dive into that one. My final thoughts on this one. For the Falcons, I've seen them all year long. I really think their turning point was that loss against PSGA earlier in the year. Coach Finley has done a tremendous job with this Falcons squad. Tons of talent across the board. Brandon Cologne definitely, in my opinion, has Division One talent with the size, the speed, the athleticism. Javier Cruz and Eli Cruz, two talented uh, uh, offensive players. A well-coached team are these Los Fresnos Falcons. Unfortunately, their season has to come to an end tonight here at Canvas Field. On the other hand, Laredo United really stepped up defensively, made the plays when needed to be. Derek at Espada, again, the game MVP for these Longhorns. Right now, what it's looking like is Converts Judson against these uh, Laredo United Longhorns. Judson is still in action right now. They have that game in control against San Antonio Warren. So the third round is looking like a Converts Judson against these Laredo United Longhorns. You wanted my pick? I'm also going to roll with the Harlingen Cardinals as well. I've seen Brandon Garza, in my opinion, the best quarterback in the Valley. And I've seen Sherry Land as well. Diego Chrysler, Lance Madden. Two talented, talented uh, quarterbacks. But I just don't think Sherryland has as much firepower as the Harlingen Cardinals do. I think the difference in that one will be Manny Gomez's defense slowing down the Rattlers for the first time really all year. So both of us are going to agree on the Harlingen Cardinals. Fans, this has been a presentation on ValleyCentral.com. Kevin Otto and Nathan Menchaca right by my side. The final score, Laredo United 16. Los Fresnos Falcons 10. Be sure to tune in tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Port Isabel takes on Orange Grove and the 3A action from Kingsville. I'll be bringing that game to you live. And Joe Bowling will be bringing the Sherryland Harlingen Cardinal game on ValleyCentral.com and Channel 4.2. Fans, once again, the final score, Longhorn 16, Falcons 10. Kevin, Nathan saying so long and good night from Corpus.